So to be for the dry um, accountants amongst us, actually BDO are our, who are the BDO people? You guys do our audits, so I can't lie or anything now, can I? Because you're here. It's all true. Actually, you're also Jones auditors too. Um, so I definitely can't lie. We've gone from the last three years, 10 million EBITDA um, through to 20, that was last year, and we'll do somewhere around 22 to 23 this year. So uh, actually, we've been very lucky, um, and we've, we've grown the business substantially, and of course, um, oh, there's a slide missing. We've got a plan that looks exactly the same for the next three years. So we'll get to 35 million EBITDA, we hope. What do our stores look like? This is our Covent Garden flagship store, massive store, actually. Um, our biggest turnover store, four million pounds turnover. Actually, it's a really fabulous shoe store. It's not as a shoe store. Shoe stores are quite boring, basically. Um, and shoe, re shoe shopping is also quite dull, isn't it? Because you walk in and then they haven't got your size, and then this sales assistant's gone for about 10 minutes, and it's a bit too hot, and you've got to take all your shoes off. It's actually a bit of a crap place to retail. So we've tried to um, create a brand that's not just about boring footwear, it's about fashion, actually. This is our Portobello Road store. It's won tons of awards. We have this huge shoe chandelier, um, which in, U in the US, we're gonna re this is a key part of our design. These spin round, actually, so it's all a bit mad. But it's, a, it's um, and this is what we do in our department store business. So we're at, we've got 200 departments in many, many, many department stores. Probably stems from my Debenham Sousey days, actually, in, in a subconscious way, loving department stores anchored by the fact that we run the Harrods footwear business. The business was owned by Harrods, hence the uh, fired comment. So we bought the, the business off of, off of Harrods, and off the back of that, we signed a very long lease to run the shoe business. Okay. Our next phase of, um, this all sounds very serious, isn't it? What is our next, I sound like um, Steve Jobs or something. What, what do we plan to do? We're turning ourselves in, into, uh, my analogy to my team is we're currently a, what's those, what, the caterpillar, then you go to a chrysalis, is it? Is that the middle one? Then you go to a butterfly. We're currently turning into a butterfly because we were a shoe company we're now moving into sell ev what's called everything but the dress. So we have handbags, we have jewelry, we have scarves, we have hats. We're everything but the dress actually is a nice example. We're moving into a, to be a company that is a fashion accessory business. So you won't just hopefully love our shoes that you'll buy everything from us um, but the dress and we're we plan to open another 100 stores in the next four or five years. We've now got a rich uncle, which is Jones, which are gonna help us do that. Um, America's next year, I've just spent two weeks in America, which I could um, talk about and probably bore you for hours about America. But nevertheless, we're opening six stores there next year in LA, New York, Chicago. <laughs> Houston, um, San Francisco. Jones have got lots of brands, Nine West being one of them, and we're going to roll those brands out across Europe within our infrastructure. We need a strategy for the Far East, we need a strategy for China. If you go to China, um, I don't know how many people have been to China, it's a really scary place because actually you realize where a lot of the future of the world is. A, there's about 1.4 billion of them, and B, they all are very smart, and they all work about three times harder than we do. So we definitely need a strategy for China. <clears throat> E-commerce, shoes is a perfect thing, because shoe shops are quite annoying. 
So if you know your size, it's a perfect item to buy online. And we do now 15% of our turnover online, which is 600,000 pounds last week on our website. I mean, it's phenomenal. We, never, we would never have had that sort of view that it could be that big. <clears throat> We're going to navigate through what, frankly, is a very, very shitty economy situation and probably going to get worse, in my view, before it gets better. And we're um, being very careful with our cash. Jane asked me, which is a really dangerous question to ask someone who's slightly mad, um, what have I learned, actually? And I spent the whole of last week while I was flying around America on numerous planes, thinking about this. This is in no particular order, and frankly, it's only about me. So there's certainly none of this is sort of advice in a way, but what, what made me what I, what I am from where I was in, in um, a very happy lad, actually, in Portsmouth. I think work has to be something you love. Um, I've got quite a lot of mates, great mates, that hate their job. Desperate to leave every day. Want to spend as little time as possible in their, in, their, in their work. It's no surprise they haven't gone anywhere, is the truth of it. Um, which is sort of fine, actually, as long as they don't moan about it and sort of ruin your night when they're only earning 17 grand a year. Um, if you're happy where you are, that's cool. But if you're not happy, you might have to work a bit harder. Um, I always endeavoured to do the, my boss's job as well as my own. Make your boss look fantastic. That was always my approach. Um, because your boss has a big influence over where, where you're going to go. Um, I'm quite materialistic, which sounds a bit naff actually, but I'm, again, I wanted to be honest. I loved cars. I loved cars from 16. My mum lent me 100 quid to buy my first Ford Escort. And about a week after I had it, I wanted a better one and a better one and a better one. That, sort of, that sort of helped me, that um, constant striving for better things. Always think you can learn. If you travel, which I've been fortunate to do, it's incredible what you learn. It's incredible what you learn about the, the world and bring it back to, your, um, back to your business. You can always be smarter, basically. Always remember the past, learn in a very obvious thing to say, but you know, we've made tons of mistakes, which I haven't had time to talk to you about, but you really have to remember what you've done wrong as much as you've done right. Get up early, that's a sort of really strange thing, isn't it? Actually, Jeremy Clarkson said this. He said, why is it that when you drive through London at 5.30 in the morning, everyone's got an Aston Martin? which I thought was quite funny, actually, because it's sort of true. And I know that's all the city boys going into the city, but I've always got up early. Even when I worked at Ambly Stores, I was always the first one in. Now, lots of people struggle with that, so which is sort of fine. It probably means you have to stay up late or something. I always found getting up early and preparing myself, writing lists, getting ready for the day, um, is what has, has helped me. I make tons of lists. I drive my wife mad with lists. I have a little action plan for everything. What my goals are going to be for next year, what, I'm going to, what cars I'm going to buy, what I'm going to do to the house, what I'm going to do for the kids. Again, those things have always helped me because I'm constantly sort of looking at them, ticking them off, crossing them out, and be critical of, of, of what you do. Um, and I always try, this sounds a bit cheesy, I, even though the company's now is a big company, I always try to talk to everyone. Again, it's a bit of an obvious thing from a management book, but this afternoon I'm going to Guildford, and I'll spend the afternoon in Guildford with all of our businesses there. No one knows I'm going. I'll drive everyone mad, but actually, staff are brilliant because they tell you the truth. Oh, wow, well, we would do much more business if the deliveries weren't so cocked up and we didn't get the size sixes. But they tell you everything. It's fantastic. The people that earn lots of money um, don't tend to tell you the truth sometimes because they're covering their ass. 
It's true. Um, okay. Um, the next couple of years are going to be really quite difficult, certainly for my business. We've had an incredibly good run in retail. We've been one of the strongest retail businesses. But since August, it's all gone basically pear-shaped from the, from the riots, actually. And has continued on, and we've got the Greece drama. I mean, the, the Americans think we're all mad, by the way, over here. They think we're absolutely, this whole Europe thing is like a, a comedy. It is sort of a comedy, actually. But nevertheless, if, you, if you're in America watching what's going on here, you basically think the whole thing is going to totally collapse, and we're not going to sell any shoes. If your business is a crappy one, which I know is quite difficult for you to judge yourself, but um, the weak and even the average businesses, frankly, probably are still at risk. I don't think we will see a big, um, well, I think actually the rules have been rewritten. I don't think we'll ever go back for a long time back to where we were three or four or five years ago. But I think we all should be, we're doing it and we're a good business, but I think we're, do, we're, we're sitting down with ourselves and saying, if we were 20% down, what would it look like? What do we need to do? Frankly, what co costs do we need to cut? What things should we stop doing? Love the internet. We, we, 10 years ago, we said no one will buy shoes on the internet. What a stupid idea. Actually, it's our most profitable business. And it's a cheap way of getting to your consumers. So we've certainly embraced the internet. And if, if anything, we will start closing stores in the next two or three years to focus on the internet. The people, people love the British. Actually, we're really, really well liked. Actually, we're trusted. If you talk again to Americans, I'm becoming slightly American. They don't trust any of the other Europeans. I think it's sort of the war thing or something. But honestly, they're, they're oh no, we wouldn't talk to the French. Or, you know, well, the Germans, that's a totally another subject. Um, the Italians have, you know, it's a place for sort of food and sex, basically, Italy. I mean, you don't go and do business there. The British are really well liked because we're sort of pretty straight people, actually. We talk the language. And I think the government, well, and us, we should be doing a lot more about this because actually people want to do business with British companies.